Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome. Today we are going to talk about a much talked about and debated theoretical position in language acquisition known as innateness hypothesis, which was proposed by Noam Chomsky in response to behaviorist paradigm or behaviorist theory of language acquisition. As we know that B.F. Skinner's work, Verbal Behavior, published in 1957, holds that language is a verbal behavior, right? And uh, it rests its, its argument on three vertical pillars of behaviorist uh, you know, work, behaviorist paradigm which is the idea of tabula rasa, a blank slate, then the idea of stimulus response chain, Pavlov's condi classical conditioning and operant conditioning by B.F. Skinner himself, he put forward in 1938. So his argument is that language is a verbal behavior, total part, part of total human behavior. And we learn language the way we learn other behaviors, right? This work by B. F. Skinner, published in 1957, was severely criticized by Noam Chomsky. And uh, Chomsky criticized this work on main multiple, you know, arguments. First and foremost was the question of tabula rasa, for that matter. And uh, he argued that. A human child is not born with tabula rasa. There is some knowledge of language that exists at the time of birth. That is, that is the beginning and the basic argument Chomsky puts forward. So, in reaction to or in response to behaviorist theory of language acquisition, we have innateness theory of language acquisition given by Chomsky. But before we go to Chomsky's argument, let us see what Chomsky criticized, uh, you know, in behaviorist paradigm or in behaviorist theory put forward by B.F. Skinner in his monumental work, Verbal Behavior. So, he claims that behaviorist theory fails to recognize what has come to be called the logical problem of language acquisition. Now, what is logical problem of language acquisition? It refers to the fact that children come to know more about the structure of their language than they could reasonably be expected to learn on the basis of samples of language which they are exposed to. So, the logical problem of language acquisition is that children learn more than they receive from the environment. So, how it happens? What are the factors which play a role into it? Children do not learn and reproduce a large set of sentences, but they routinely create new sentences that they have never learned before. You might have noticed that children produce words and sentences, you cannot guess where they have learnt it from. So, they are not simply imitating what is being given to them from the environment or what they receive from the environment. They are creating, right? And at times you see, they, they give you uh, a new word, a new sentence, a new, t new, new kind of combination of words in a sentence, which may be, uh, you know, unique, but that's the case. And uh, certainly they have not received it from the adult's speech. So, how it happens? So, can we attribute all of these things to the input that they get from environment or is there any? internal factor which come 
into play right that's what chomsky argues he says that children internalize rules rather than a string of words so he is talking about a pattern formation you know children invent the rules they create the rules they don't learn everything that is given to them but they see a finer internal pattern into it and they create their own words and sentences he says language the child is exposed to in the environment is not ideal and complete uh, it's fuzzy and what does it mean it means that we all know that children are not subjected to a very ideal situation or a very ideal atmosphere of learning they stay with us in the normal adult world and they get data from a normal adult speech and uh, adult speech is marked with multiple degeneracy uh, you know slip of tongue errors so many things and children are exposed to all of these incomplete unfinished uh, you know data which is fuzzy in nature but learning is perfect so children learn perfectly fine how it happens can be attributed to the external factors only then he says that children are not systematically corrected so what you call in 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 behavior theory reinforcement for that matter so the schedules of reinforcement in terms of language and linguistic input is not systematic so occasional or intermittent but the learning is systematic and perfect so again the same question that can it be attributed to only external factors and he says that parental corrections or adults around the child who try to correct or intervene or reinforce uh they they focus more on the content of the input not the format or not the rules of grammar or not the rules of the language or the structure they focus more on content meaning part of it so again this is not you know uh, systematic and this is not consistent so and several other other points he raises uh in criticism of pf skinner's work which was published in 1957 as verbal behavior and chomsky's criticism came into publication in 1959 and that generated a lot of debate uh a few people supported behaviorist idea but majority of them argued in favor of chomsky's idea of some internal in quotes factors which determine language learning or acquisition of language so it's it's in, in, interesting and also significant to understand the chomskyan perspective of language acquisition which is known as now generative theory or uh, you know he gave two hypotheses one is called linguistic nativism and the other is known as innateness hypothesis the chomsky himself did not coin these terms but for example innateness hypothesis was coined by hilary patnam you know and nativism was supported by many great scholar like steven pinker for that matter so so the, so these two hypotheses summarize the chomskyan perspective one is innateness hypothesis the other is linguistic nativism chomsky started his his investigation into into understanding process of acquisition language acquisition by a human child with three etymological question so he asked three questions number one so he focuses on knowledge of language and he asks three questions etymological questions number one what is knowledge of language so when we say knowledge of language child has knowledge of language at the time of birth as in nettis hypothesis claim claims uh what is knowledge of language what do you mean by that first question here second how this knowledge of language is 
acquired right knowledge of language in abbreviated form is also called k o l k capital o small and l capital knowledge of language in literature so he asked three questions what is knowledge of language then he asked how this knowledge of language is acquired and then he asked how this knowledge of language is put into practice so he's talking about performance in the third question in first two is talking about competence so second question is about competence and the third question is about performance first question is about nature and characteristics of language right universality of it so two hypotheses he gives and uh, his approach is called nativist approach or innateness hypothesis or overall as a paradigm we name it as generative paradigm so the term nativist derives from the fundamental assertion that language acquisition is innately determined that we are born with a genetic capability that predisposes us to systematic perception of language around us resulting in the construction of an internalized system of language chomsky calls it i language i refers to internalized system i language now you can see the departure departure from behaviorist position and almost like 180 degree opposite so they are relying on external factors chomsky here talks about internal factors which is innate and we are built like that we are designed to learn a language human child is designed to learn a language so you know uh, internal factors chomsky claims that children are biologically programmed for language and that language develops in the child just the same way other biological functions develop so he is talking about the internal factors in language acquisition and uh, this is also referred to as a biological foundation of language right in chomsky's perspective and uh, he said that children are born human children are born with a special ability right to discover for themselves underlying rules of language system right and the environment makes a basic contribution in the case the availability of people who speak to the child the child or other the child's biological endowment will do the rest so he said that you know role of external environment and external factors are limited we need to understand the contrast it is a very a very uh, it is a very a uh, contrastive position compared to the behaviorist position where environment is the prime factor for uh, tabula rasa to become a source of data and processing here chomsky talks about an internal factor the the biological endowment or programming of the child for acquiring a language and he says that the role of external environment is limited to the extent that it needs to activate this biological endowment we'll know what he refers to as biological endowment in in very soon so he gives he puts forward two ideas or his ideas can be summarized in two uh, you know terms innate hypothesis and linguistic nativism so the innate hypothesis is an expression coined by hilary putnam to refer to a linguistic theory of language acquisition this idea holds that at least some knowledge about language exists in a human child at the time of birth innate so language is innate to human being we are we are innately designed right we have some innate apparatus to acquire a language and this is species specific putnam used the expression the innate hypothesis to to target linguistic nativism and specifically the views of noam chomsky in terms of facts about complexity of human language system the universality of language acquisition 
the facility that children demonstrate in acquiring the system and the comparative performance of adults in attempting the same task are all commonly invoked in support. And you might have noticed that you know, as a child, learning language is child's play, as we say. The children learn language with remarkably effortless you know, uh, thing. They, they are, it's language learning for a child is a child's play. It is effortless. They don't require a specific instructions and interventions for acquiring a language. And the speed and the rate of acquisition is very high. But if you contrast it with the adult learning, what happens? As an adult, if I start learning, let's say, German at this age, I have to put a lot of effort. It's visible effort, you know, lots of effort. And my learning will not be as fast and accelerated as we see in the child, in the early childhood. So, what makes this difference? Why a child acquires language so effortlessly and easily at such a high speed, at a high rate of acquisition? And what happens to adults? Why we are slowed down? And why we have to make so much of effort? And the answer lies in Chomsky's you know, uh, perspective when he talks about linguistic nativism. And also ideas like, you know, universal grammar, ideas like, you know, LAD, we'll talk about them later on. Now, what is linguistic nativism? This says that language is native to human. So we are designed and programmed to learn a language. And this, this nativism idea was supported and argued by Steven Pinker also, I just, one of the renowned psychologists, right? And Steve, Steven Pinker affirms Chomsky's views that human faculty of language is innate, inbuilt, it's there. Pinker argues that language in humans is a biological adaptation. Language is hardwired in human minds for by evolution. So we find a lot of biological foundation arguments into it, right? So, linguistic nativism is a theory that humans are born with some knowledge of language. I, I, you remember we talked about knowledge of language, how it is acquired, how it is put into practice. So, human language is complicated and forms one of the most complex areas of human cognition. So, he separates language from other faculty of cognition. So, Chomsky's argument is that language is not part of total human behavior. Language learning is different from learning of any other, uh, you know, behavior. We cannot equate both the faculties of cog cognition as one or parallel to each other. And the innateness hypothesis supports language nativism and several regions and concepts have been proposed to support and explain this hypothesis. In his work, Chomsky introduced the idea of LED and which is which is in contrast to tabula rasa, the idea of John Locke's idea of tabula rasa, blank slate. And here we see a contrast between these two theories where behaviorists believe that human child is born with no knowledge and no source of data and processing capabilities. It is blank slate for them. But in Chomsky's perspective, what we see that human child is born with some amount of knowledge of language. We'll get to know what is this knowledge of language. So he introduces the term called LED. The full form of LED is language acquisition device. But let's not be confused by this word device because device doesn't refer to any physiological, physical, you know, apparatus or system like we have other organs. It is, a, it is a hypothetical mechanism that refers to the efficacy of a child to, to learn a language. So it's, it's a mechanism, okay? It's not an apparatus and in, as a physical, in physical terms. Our, it is not a device physically you know, located in our brain. 
it is a hypothetical mechanism it refers to the ability and of the child to to learn a language to acquire a language so if you look at the, the argument that chomsky puts forward he says i quote the speed and precision of vocabulary acquisition leaves no real alternative to the conclusion that child somehow has the concepts available before experience with language and is basically learning levels for concepts that are already a part of his conceptual apparatus i unquote conceptual apparatus right so lad language acquisition device is not a physiological thing it's a conceptual apparatus ability of the child to learn and he strengthens his argument he substantiates his argument by uh, you know looking at with looking at the at the rate and the amount of uh, vocabulary that a child learns within no time and with no visible effort and also no visible intervention by adults around the child at the same time no structured instructions so what are what how it happens what are the factors there must be some internal predisposed factors which allows a child which enables a child to acquire a language so systematically so easily and so richly so it's, it's it's completely rich uh, acquisition child learns all the rules of grammar i mean you go and talk to a child four and a half year old child for a four year old child let's say in hindi we have grammatical gender for that matter and you go and ask papa office jati hai child may not be you know exposed to per se structure and you know you know uh, uh, you know gender agreement in hindi child doesn't have child has has not been exposed to explanation of uh, you know gender agreement in hindi but child understands it how child arrives uh, child arrives at these rules how do they understand the impossible sentences or ungrammatical sentences in a in a language this is the basis of chomsky's argument that how child is able to figure out what is possible and what is not possible in language grammatical rules how does it happen nobody teaches a child grammatical rules they are only exposed to some amount of data which is again fuzzy incomplete full of degeneracy and other other negative things but learning of a child is perfectly fine right so he talks about a uh, language acquisition device in short abbreviation we call it lad so the lad is an abstract part of human mind which houses the ability for humans to acquire and produce language chomsky proposed that children are able to derive rules of a language through hypothesis testing because they are equipped with lad the lad then transforms these rules into basic grammar hence according to chomsky the lad explains why children seem to have the innate ability to acquire a language and accounts for why no explicit teaching is required for a child to acquire a language so children are endowed with this apparatus conceptual apparatus let's call it and knowledge of language is innately there at the time of birth and child is designed or programmed through this evolutionary process to learn a human language around it spoken around it but how does it work how did this did this lad works so lad requires to be activated and how it is activated it is activated with primary linguistic data very small chunk of data required to activate this lad so chomsky does not outrightly you know you know uh, 
opposes the role of environment, external environment, but he limits the role of external environment, unlike behaviorist, to the extent that this primary data, small sample size of data, linguistic data, is required to trigger and activate LED. And once this LED is activated, the child becomes autonomous learner. So the child doesn't require specific instructions, a structured training to learn a language, to acquire a language. And once it is activated, the child is able to discover the structure of the language to be learnt by matching the innate knowledge of basic grammatical relationships to the structures of the particular language in the environment. And later on, this idea was referred to as universal grammar, looking at the universality of the linguistic rules of a language, language rules at underlying level. So, universal grammar, the idea is a set of language principles. That means, all human languages have the same principles at underlying level. But they all look different. Hindi looks different from, let's say, English. English looks different from, let's say, Telugu. Telugu looks different from, let's say, Tamil. Tamil looks different from Mexican. Take any language. All these languages look so different. Chomsky doesn't refer to the differences that we see at superficial level in all these languages. He's referring to a set of principles. He calls these differences as parameters. So, languages are parametrically different, but principally they follow the same set of principles. And UG is nothing, universal grammar is nothing, but the set of universal principles on which human language operate, operates, right? So, child is endowed with this UG, which needs to be triggered. And then child sets the parameters. So, child has the principles, grammatical principles available at the time of birth and child sets the parameters depending on the input child gets from the external environment. So, if a child is born in let's say Hindi speaking environment, the UG available to Hindi speaking child uh, you know, in that environment will be set according to the Hindi rules or similarly English or you know Mexican or Tamil or Telugu or Spanish, whatever. So, universal principles are available to the child in terms of UG and LED, but they are, the, the, they are set, the parameters are set according to the input that the child receives from the environment. And that is why, uh, you know, language is not genetic by the way. Even if, you know, Hindi speaking parents adopt a French, a child from French speaking parent, child will learn Hindi in the environment or Telugu in the environment or Tamil in the environment, right. So, parameters will be local depending on the external input that child gets to activate the UG. So, parameters will be set accordingly, but principles of learning remain the same, principles of language remain the same, right. Uh, Chomsky later introduced genitive grammar, arguing that properties of a genitive grammar arise from an innate universal grammar. And this genitive grammar describes a set of rules that are used to order words correctly in order to form grammatically sound sentences. It also attempts to describe a speaker's innate grammatical knowledge. So, this is what Chomsky refers to as KOL. But again, another strong evidence comes from the fact that the child who is exposed to uh, linguistic input, linguistic data around it, uh, you know, the data is, is, is not appropriate, is not positive all the time. And it has many characteristics which amounts to the term Chomsky refers to as poverty of stimulus. Stimulus, the same you know, uh, behaviorist idea that he borrows here. Stimulus is poor, 
So when he says stimulus is poor in his argument, what does it mean? What do you mean by poverty of stimulus? <coughs> so he says that primary linguistic data that, that a child receives from the environment is not, you know, appropriate if you look at the learning pattern of a child. Learning is perfectly fine. Child acquires grammatical rules. Child forms a, his own grammar of the of the language. However, the quality of input that the child gets, it is fuzzy and problematic, poor in nature in terms of richness. It's very poor in nature. So how it happens that with such a poor stimulus, with such a degenerate stimulus, with such an incomplete stimulus or such a fudgy stimulus, learning is so systematic and fine. This is the basic argument and he refers to internal factors in codes, genetic, you know, so, so biologically uh, endowed conceptual apparatus. So he talks about LED and UG, innateness and nativism. So these are the, the, this is the basic argument for these concepts that he puts forward, he gives in his support of the claim. Uh, Pullam and Scholes summarize the properties of child's environment and that is appropriately apt and self-explanatory. We all can see around us. So the characteristics of stimulus that the child has around it, you know, like positivity. So, children are always exposed to positive data. What do you mean by that? Adults speech, right? So, you do not have a separate, you know, design data for a child to, to, you know, learn what is possible and what is not possible in a language. Child is not exposed to the data, what is not possible, the structure, what is not possible, the ordering of words, what is not possible. Child acquires normal adult speech. Child witnesses normal adult speech, which is positive data. But how come child is able to make a distinction between ungrammatical sentence and grammatical sentence? That is another uh, argument, right? So children are only exposed to positive linguistic data. Moreover, there is a lack of negative data that aids a child in identifying ungrammatical sentences that are unacceptable in a language. So how come a child is able to filter ungrammatical sentences or impossible sentences? Right? So this is one. Then the second characteristic they talk about is degeneracy. Right? So they say that child is, is exposed to erroneous data. Because, you know, as an adult, we have slip of tongue, we have half-finished sentences, we have referential information, ha incomplete sentences, right? And children are exposed to such things because, because in no environment, all around, all the adults around the child, you know, you know expose the child with complete sentences or uh, you know, you know, ideal data. So the exposure of the child is not ideal. So we have degeneracy in the data, but the learning of a child is perfectly fine and systematic. Then they talk about incompleteness, and we all understand that sentences are incomplete and fuzzy in adults' speech. We are casual. We speak language normally, casually, and uh, sometimes. You have stylistic variations, different pronunciations, idiosyncrasies. But with all these properties, learning is not marked. Learning becomes perfectly fine for a child. If they talk about idiosyncrasy in the data available to a child. So the linguistic data the children are exposed to are different and idiosyncratic. Right, and there are many utterances 
that the child may not have heard before, but the child is able to produce. So when you look at when you look at Chomsky's explanation and uh, the the language acquisition process in human child, we see a complete departure from behaviorist paradigm. If you recall, behaviorist paradigm rests on three verticals: stimulus response chain, operant conditioning. Uh, you know the concept of theory of tabula rasa and role of reinforcement, and this leads to habit formation. And this is how they argue that language is a bubble behavior, part of total human behavior. But if you look at Chomsky's argument, he puts forward. If you look at Chomsky's explanation in what we know today in generative theory. Right, it's also known as nativist theory or innateness theory. He refers to internal factors. The role of environment is limited to the extent that some data, small chunk of data, is required to trigger the process of learning. So he talks about the creativity, imagination, and ability of a child. To acquire a language systematically, despite the fact that the data available to a child in the environment is incomplete, degenerate, and fuzzy, he refers to the ability, innate ability of a child to determine what is possible sentence or a structure in a language and what is not possible sentence or a structure in a language. How does it happen? So there must be some internal factors, and supported by many other scholars in subsequent works, we get a biological foundation of language. So compared to the psychological psych tradition of psychology and behavioral psychology and cognitive theories, here we have a biological foundation where. Child is autonomous learner, and child is endowed with a conceptual apparatus to learn a language. Child is predisposed. Child is designed or programmed. Human child is programmed to learn a language. What Steven Pinker calls, uh, we are hardwired. A human brain is hardwired to learn a language. So we see a complete departure from behaviorist position in the generative theory, in Chomsky theory. And Chomsky's theory was also criticized, but one thing for sure is that the infinite creativity, imagination, autonomy of learning, and biological foundation of language, separating it from other learner behavior and cognition faculties, uh, Chomsky drew attention to the fact that children seem to be to develop language in similar way on a similar schedule. So he talks about universality, universal uh, process of language learning across all languages. He doesn't talk about a particular language or a particular environment. So as a human child, we have universal patterns of learning, and there must be some shared uh, mechanism that a child learns. And uh, environmental differences, the environment in which child is exposed to language or linguistic data. May be associated with some variation in the rate of acquisition. However, the pattern of learning, the pattern of acquisition, remains the same. So this is Chomsky's contribution. Uh, we know it as innateness hypothesis, innateness theory of language learning. We also call it nativist theory of language learning, or overall, we put it in generative paradigm. So we have. A very distinct paradigm called behaviorist paradigm, and just opposite uh, position, and we call it generative paradigm. So this is Chomsky's paradigm perspective in language acquisition, and if you count the verticals of this theory, we have linguistic nativism, we have 
in neatness hypothesis we have language acquisition device later on referred to as universal grammar and we have the limitations of data available to child but perfect learning process called poverty of stimulus and uh, one more reference reference can be taken in this perspective which is critical period hypothesis though not proposed by chomsky but that comes into play understanding chomsky's perspective that this led or universal grammar or the rules universal rules for a language are not available to you for entire life it has some threshold so that critical period refers to the threshold when this universal grammar once the parameters are set the principle ceases to be and perhaps this is the reason why adults find it so difficult to learn a language second language or third language as an adult because this critical period ends at the age of puberty so this whole apparatus conceptual apparatus is available to you for a certain period of time in the early childhood and once this period is over which is known as critical period it's the 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 universal grammar or the universal set of principles cease to be because these principles are set as parameters and then adults find it so difficult to learn a language because they have to make visible efforts and a lot of efforts they have to make to learn a language however learning a language for a child is child's play and why it's a child's play we have just explained you can get answer in chomsky's perspective thank you